Let's now integrate a payment system into our project. And to do this, we need to select a payment system. And I'm going to be using PayPal because PayPal is one of the best payment options out there. And I think it's going to be just amazing and it's going to help us a lot. And uh, uh, I think it's just one of the best options and I'm going to be selecting PayPal. So in order to start uh, integrating PayPal, the process, first of all, you need to know that the process is pretty long. And I'm going to be dividing the process into into a uh, small and uh, few steps, short steps, so that you understand. So the first step is that you need to create a PayPal account. You need to head on over to paypal.com and then create an account. However, you need to create a business account, not a personal account. So just head on over to paypal.com and then click on sign up. And then after you click on sign up, you need to select business account, not personal account. You need to select business account. And then click on next. And uh, if you don't find this option, by the way, you need to, you need to convert your account. Uh, after you create a personal account, you need to convert the account to a business account from your account after registration if you don't find this option. But you will find this option for many countries. So here, what you need to do is that you need to type your email and that's it. Pretty simple. Just type your email and then, re of course, you need to verify your email and that's it. So the process is very simple and straightforward. I'm not going to continue because I already have a PayPal account. So uh, uh, here, all you need to do is, uh, is that you need to type your email and then click on continue and just fill out the next uh, form that you are going to get because the form will um, will need to be filled and then just confirm your email. So that's it. And uh, of course, you need to verify your email. So after you have done all of this and, uh, and after you have uh, finished uh, registering, you need to head on over to developer.paypal.com. Again, that's developer.paypal.com. This is the URL that we need to use in order to be able to uh, in integrate PayPal into our uh, project. So you need again to head on over to PayPal uh, developer.paypal.com and then click on log in to dashboard. And then you need to type the email and the password that you have just created with, with PayPal, the business account here. So let me type my business account here. So after you type your email, you just need to click on next. And then you need to type your password here. And then you need to click on login. So after you log in, you will find your in your dashboard you will find apps. And what an app me what what an app um, is an app is just uh, a project. So for, for every project that you want to integrate um, uh, PayPal into, you need to create a separate app for it. And I'm going to be showing you how to use apps. And what's important here is that we have two tabs here, one for sandbox and the other for live. The sandbox is used for testing. The live, of course, is used in whenever you are ready and you want to publish your application where real people will pay real money and uh, uh, will use your your projects or web applications, websites, whatever. Uh, so here on the left side we have your account, we have the sandbox. So what's important here is the sandbox. Here you need to click on accounts and you need to create two accounts. One account will represent the buyer and the other one will represent the owner because the buyer is going to pay to the owner. So you need to create two accounts. Let me show you how you can do that. First, you need to click here on create account. And now I'm going to create an account, which is going to be a personal buyer account. So the buyer, again, will pay to the business account. So I'm going to here select the country. You need to select your country and then click on create. And then here it's going to say the sandbox account was created successfully. So this is a sandbox account. This is a testing account. 
So we need to create another account that will represent the owner, the, the business. So you need to click here again on create account. And then you need to create a new account, which is going to be this time a business account. Click on business. And then you need to select your country. I'm going to be selecting here the United States. Uh, and uh, then click on create. And then here it's going to say again the, the sandbox account was created successfully. And if you scroll, if you scroll, you'll, you will find all of the accounts that you have. So here I have these accounts that I just created. One is a business account, which is going to represent the uh, owner. And the other one is the buyer, uh, which, which represents the, the customer or the buyer or the user. So the personal account will pay to the business. And you need to remember these emails. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to be using, of course, in, in order to pay and in order to test, we, we need to use the I need to log in to the system using this personal account. I'm going to and I'm going to be showing you that because the personal again, the this account will pay to the business account. So you should by now have these two accounts on this on these three dots and then click on edit uh, account, edit view, uh, view edit account. You will find that this account has been initialized with a money with a uh, with around uh, 5,000, I think. If you click on funding, you will find that it it contain it uh, it uh, it has five thousand dollars. So this account has five five thousand dollars. And for the business account, it will. If you click on funding, if you click on funding here, funding you will find that it has also $5,000. So the reason why this is important is because after testing, the amount of money will increase for the, for the business and will decrease for the owner, for the personal account. So this is the second step. The third step is to create an app. So you need to click on My Apps and Credentials and create a new app. So here, what you need to do is that you need to click on create app here, click on create app, and you will be able to create an app. So this is very, very important. You need to create an app and you need to give it a name. I'm going to say here, my project, my project, just my project. And then I'm going to click on uh, here. You need to select your merchant or uh, platform. Uh, and here I'm going to select uh, this option. And then this is very important. You need to select the business account. So the business account that's that I have just created is this one, is this email, and and then just click on create app. That's it. Pretty simple. Now, after you create an app, you will find that this app has a client ID and a secret. These two are important because these two I'm going to be using to add to add them into our project and uh, by using this we will be able to connect to PayPal otherwise we will not be able to connect to PayPal so these uh, client ID and secret are the sandbox the sandbox API credentials and whenever we go live we will be using we will be requesting another API uh, another uh, uh, client ID and secret and change we we also need to change the 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 project here from sandbox to a live that's it and you will be able to use this for real money so that people will pay you so here as you can see here it says uh, sandbox uh, API credentials so this is the sandbox this is for testing this is just for testing And if you scroll, you'll find many options. And by default, you will be have you will have these options: accept payments, invoicing. Just keep these as uh, they are because this because these are important. You need to welcome back. So now, if you click on my apps and credentials, you will find all of your apps. And here, if you click on live, you will find your project here. If you click on it, you will find the live credentials. So what is the difference between Sandbox and Live? Live credentials will allow you to receive real money from users. So if I click on my project here, you will find here it says my project and you will find PayPal account and client ID and secret. So these three are very important because these three will represent the live credentials. 
So the PayPal account is the is your real pay, PayPal account, the client ID you will use in order to connect to PayPal and get real money. And of course, the secret, if you click on this show, it's going to show you the secret key. And this is for the live. If you go back and click on my apps, And if you click on Sandbox, you will find here your project. If you click on it, you will find your credentials, the uh, Sandbox account, the client ID, and the secret. But this is for testing. So again, you have two options. You have the Sandbox and uh, the Live. The Sandbox is used for testing, which, which I'm going to be using. And then whenever we go live, we just need to use the Live credentials. That's it. Pretty simple. Welcome back. So now it's time to start integrating PayPal into our project. And the first step is that you need to log into your uh, developer.paypal.com. And then we need to select one of the options. So first of all, you need to know that in order to integrate uh, PayPal into your project, there are so many options. And I'm going to be using an option called Checkout. So you need here, after you log in, you need to click on Docs, just hover over it, and then here, click on Get Started here uh, click on get started and after you click on get started just click on accept payments accept payments and then click on check out so this is the method that I'm going to be using is called check out and uh, this method is going to allow us to uh, receive payments from customers so after you click on check out just click on set up standard payments click on it and as you can see this method is going to allow us to add a button that we can customize and uh, uh, add the, the, uh, the amount of money that we want to receive uh, from customers. And uh, all you need to do now is that you need to click on Integrate PayPal Checkout for Online Payments. Click on it. And uh, here it's going to give you a very long uh, steps here, a very long guide. But the problem with PayPal is that it's very complicated. Therefore, I'm going to make the process very easy for you by just dividing the steps into short and easy steps. So the first step is that here in this page, all we need to do is that we need to get a code, a piece of code that's going to generate the button that you have, that you have seen uh, shortly, which is this button. That code is going to generate that button into our website, in, into our project, and then we will be able to receive payment from uh, customers. And before I continue, you need to know that uh, PayPal uh, regularly uh, and cons uh, consistently changes the location of of this of the uh, of uh, of this method uh, in their website. So you need to sometimes you might not find it uh, uh, here. So you need to look for it. You need to click again on Docs and then get started and then look for it. Uh, but it's the method is called checkout and then just set up standard payments and then integrate. Now the first step is that we need to get the code from PayPal. So the code is this code. This is the code. Let me show you where is the code. This is the code. The code is, starts from here. So you need to start copying from here this script and all the way down to the end of the script. You need to scroll and copy all of this code. You need, co you need to copy all of this code. Let me copy all of this code. Let me copy all of this code. So we need to get all of this code. Let me copy it. So we need this code. Don't copy, don't copy the other part. Just copy starting from the script all the way to the end of the script. Copy it. Just copy it. And then you need to head on over to your uh, project and paste it. And I'm going to show you where you need to paste it because you, of course, you shouldn't paste it uh, any uh, at uh, in any file you need to paste it at a specific location so now in my uh, in my project what you need to do is that you need to open up the payment.php payment again that's payment.php and then where should you paste it you should paste it above the footer above the footer.php here you should paste it here just paste that code here so now we have this code so this is the first step so the, again, the first step is to get this code. This code is going to generate the button that you have seen. The second step is that to is that we need to get the client ID. 
So where should we get the client ID? We should we should get the client ID from the uh, from our from your account. So let me head on over back to the to the uh, to PayPal. So in PayPal, just head on over again to your account and log in, and then click on your project, the project that you are using for this uh, uh, the the project that you have created for this project. So I'm going to click on it. So once you click on it, you will find the Sandbox account and the client ID. You need to copy your client ID and head on over back to the to the uh, to the to the project. So let me copy. Let me copy my client ID. Now in your project, you need to paste the client ID. But where should you paste it? You should paste it here. And instead of this test, here it says client hyphen ID is equal to test. So we need to remove this test and paste paste here paste here your client ID. As you can see, this is my client ID. Again, you need to be very careful because if you get this wrong, it's not gonna work. Again, double check your client ID and make sure that you copied your client ID correctly and paste it here. Client ID, client hyphen ID is equal to your client ID that you pasted. This is very, very important. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you uh, and I'm going to walk you through the code. So the, the code is, is like this. The URL is just going to connect to PayPal, this URL that contains your client ID. And then below this, we have here a dev. We need to move this dev, but I'm going to let me uh, delay this because it's going to take a little bit of time and you need to understand it. Here we have the script. So we, this script has a PayPal. It connects to the PayPal and it uses this function called buttons. This function is going to create the button and this function is going to have a value key and that value is the amount of money that you will receive. And we need to change this amount depending upon the total amount that the user should pay us. And then we have on approve function. This function will be called if we get the if we if the uh, payment has been processed successfully, we will get uh, here a uh, uh, a data from the from PayPal telling us that payment was processed successfully and money was transferred from the from the customer to our account. And in case of error, also this is going to handle errors in case we have any errors. Here, this is going to handle any problems. Now, let me show you the button. So the button is this is this. So what I'm going to do is that first I'm going to copy this dev. And then I'm going to remove it from here. And then I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to paste it here just for now. I'm going to paste it here for now. And let me head on over to the browser. So now the in the browser, let me go to forward slash payment.php. And if you go to payment.php, you should find the button. If you if you can't find the button, then then there is a problem. But you should find the pro the button as long as you follow the steps that I show uh, that I have shown you. You will find the button. As you can see, this is the button. So now, as you can see, the button is being displayed even though you here it says you don't have an order. Therefore, we need to fix this. So let me show you how we can fix this. To fix this, what we need to do is that instead of displaying our button, remember this input which is our button we can comment our button out we no longer need our button I'm gonna comment the button out and instead I'm gonna paste PayPal's button I'm gonna paste this code I'm gonna paste this code so let me here copy it again let me copy it from here and then remove it from here and then we need to paste it in two locations we need to paste it here and we need to paste it here so we need to paste it here because here here first in the first if statement this means that the the cart is is uh, is not empty here it means that the user wants to pay for an order that he made earlier so here only here we need to display the we need to display paypal's button let me let me now save and head on over back to the browser uh, and test now in the browser if i refresh the button will be gone because the button will only be displayed in case we have something in the cart. So let's add something to the cart real quick. So I'm going to go back to the home page. And now in the home page, I'm going to add something to the cart. 
such as this. And then I'm going to click here on Add to Cart. And then I'm going to click on uh, Check Out. And I'm going to fill out this form. So if you fill out this form and click on Place Order, the order will be will be placed in case you are logged in, in case you are logged in. But I'm not logged in, so let me log in first. And then I'm going to go to the checkout page, and from the checkout, let me fill the 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 uh, form one more time. And then I'm going to click on place order. Now if I click on place order, guess what? Now we have PayPal's button being displayed here and it looks amazing. Now the button is being displayed and here it says total payment. So the user will be able to pay now if, if they click on it. But of course, we still need to handle uh, a few things before this, uh, this uh, button becomes fully functioning. Because we need to tell PayPal, hey PayPal, we want the user to pay this amount because this because PayPal now doesn't know about this amount yet welcome back now it's time to tell PayPal hey PayPal we want you to take this amount of money which is here in this case in this example it's 155 and then we need to tell PayPal hey PayPal we want you to let the user pay 155 because PayPal doesn't know about this this number this number is is being displayed by our application not by pay not uh, by PayPal and PayPal doesn't know about it so let's now do this let's tell, tell PayPal about this number so how can we do this let me show you how we can do this so now in our project in order to tell PayPal hey PayPal we have this amount we need to find where the amount is so where is the amount the amount first of all is this remember the amount is stored is stored here in the session is stored in the uh, uh, session total or in the total uh, in the order total price. So it's either one of them. So we need to get these to we need to get them and uh, display them here. Display them here instead of this value. And before we do this, we have to, but before we do this, we need to decide whether one, which one uh, we are going to be using. So how can we do that? To do that, we need here in case, in case the, in case the cart, in case the user wants to pay after they added something to the cart, then here after echoing, after echoing here, what we want to do is that we need to create here another PHP code here, PHP, and then in this PHP code, we need to say uh, amount is going to be equal now to the session, session, and then total. Similarly here, in case in case the user came from their account, we need to display the same exact code. PHP amount is equal to post order total price. Order total price. And it's very important to know that PayPal wants this number as a string, so we need to convert this into a string. I'm going to say st st uh, str val this value, and then I'm going to I'm going to pass the uh, I'm going to pass this uh, into it. Similarly, here I'm going to say here str val, and then I'm going to pass the value into it.
So now we have this amount. This amount will be used in the script. Now, we can use it in the script to tell PayPal about the money that the user must pay. So here, as you can see, we have this 77. So instead of saying 77, we need to remove this 77. And instead, we need to use PHP. We need to say PHP. And then we need to say echo amount. Amount. And then semicolon. That's it. Very, very simple. And then click on save all. So again, let me explain this one more time because I think you might uh, have gotten confused. So here, again, if the if user came from the cart, uh, uh, first we need to check that we need to make sure that the cart is not empty and the total is not empty and it's not zero either. And then we, uh, at this point, we can get the total and then we can store the total in a variable called amount. And then we need to convert it to a string using the str function. And uh, in case user came from the their uh, their their account because they want to pay for an order that they have created earlier we can we should use the order total price and store it in a variable called amount and by the way here it's better also to check the to check that the order uh, the order total price is not empty uh, but it's it's 99% going to be it's it's 99% 99.9% uh, not going to be empty because it's related to the order uh, status. Whenever we have an order, it means whenever the order status is not paid, then there is a number associated with it. So this is just an extra step you can add, but I'm not going to add it here. Here, I'm going to just store the value in the amount. And then lastly here, uh, in case, uh, uh, of course, the buttons will be displayed in, in both cases. Otherwise, there is no button, so we don't have to worry about anything if there if there is no uh, uh, order. And then, in PayPal's code, we just display this amount, replace this amount uh, rather than the static amount. Now, PayPal knows about the value from us. Now, PayPal knows that this amount is the amount that the that the customer should pay. Pretty simple. And then here, uh, uh, upon uh, clicking on the button this amount will, will be uh, paid by the user and here on approve if if the amount has been approved approved successfully then paypal is going to return a few things and we can continue and uh, by the way we can here say uh, alert uh, paypal already has the code by the way it says here uh, alert transaction so uh, we don't have to worry about this either welcome back now it's time to test PayPal's button and test payment. So to do this, first of all, you need to add something to the cart, and then you need to place the order and follow all, uh, all of these steps. And then finally, you will uh, end up here in the payment uh, page. Now let's work on this. Let me here refresh to make sure that uh, the code uh, took effect. And let me now click on PayPal, PayPal's button. Let me click on PayPal. So if I click on it, a pop-up window will be displayed and as you can see it will be displayed here a, uh, a pop-up window but now we need to, to uh, enter an email and a password so what is the email that you need to enter you need to enter the pay the 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 email that you have created earlier the buyer email remember let me show you where it is so you need to you need to go back to your developer account and in your account, you should find, you should look for the the uh, buyer email. So this is the business email. The business, of course, the business is not going to pay to themselves. The buyer should pay to the business. So let me go back to the to my account, to my apps, and go to the uh, to the email. So you need to head on over to your uh, account and then click on accounts under sandbox. Click on accounts. And here you'll find your all, all of your business and personal accounts. So we need to use the personal account. I'm going to copy the email. You need to copy the email, this email. You need to copy it. You need to copy this email. Let me click here on uh, view uh, edit account. And as you can see, this is the the total. This is the the complete 
email ID. You need to copy this ID. You need to copy this ID and you need to know the, the password because I'm going to be using these in order to log in and test. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to head on over to my website. So remember my website, when I clicked on the button, it here uh, is asking me to log in. So let me paste the uh, email and let me paste the password. So let me go back to PayPal. And here we have the password. Let me copy the password, which is this password. Let me copy the password. And let me head on over back to the to the uh, website. And now let me paste the password. And let me here click on login. So as you can see, I will be logged in now, and here it says 155, so it's correct. Remember, the, the, uh, the amount is 155. This is the amount, 155. So now the amount has been transferred to PayPal correctly, 155. So as you can see, the user can, can now pay using PayPal Balance or Visa Card or anything, any method that PayPal provides. Let's use the PayPal uh, Balance. And then let me click on here, pay now. Let me here click on pay now. And here it says processing. And as you can see here, it says transaction completed and it returned here a number where we can use it later. But it, it, uh, this number, this transaction completed, it means that payment was proce processed successfully. And uh, it, it means that everything is perfect. Now, what we need to do is that we need to make sure that this happened correctly. So I'm going to head on over back to PayPal. Now in PayPal, remember, we have two emails. We have the business and personal. Let's check the, let's now check the balance of the business and the balance of the uh, buyer. So the customer, this is the email of the customer. Let me click on funding and see if money uh, went down or not, as you can see. Now the balance the balance initially was 5,000. Now the balance is 4,845. Uh, 4, so the balance decreased by $155, which is the amount of money that the user had to pay to us in order to get the shoes. Similarly, in the, in the uh, uh, business account, if you check the funding here, if you click on edit account, and if you click on funding, if you click, let me show you this, if you click on funding, you'll find that the balance increased here. The balance now is uh, 5,149. 5, why it's not 155? Why it's 149? Because PayPal takes a commission. PayPal takes a commission. This is why it uh, it's not exactly 155. So whenever you make you whenever you make pay, pay, uh, payment with PayPal, PayPal is going to take a commission. I think it's uh, 2.5 to up to 5 percent. But it depends upon your country and it depends upon your business. Many things can affect the 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 amount of money that PayPal PayPal takes from this total. But you are gonna get here uh, the amount, and it means that it works successfully. So now we know that payment was processed successfully and we the payment has been integrated successfully into our website. Welcome back. Now what we need to do is that we need to work on a very important uh, thing, or actually two things. The first thing is that here in the payment.php, we need to replace this, this if statement uh, above, we need to add this if statement above the session. In other words, we want to give the priority to the orders that are inside the user's account because if user clicks on a button from from their account on the order on the details of the order or actually on the payment of the order from their account and if they have something in the cart the priority will be will be to the cart to the to the uh, products in the cart and the order will not be uh, the user will not be able to pay for the order that is waiting in their account 
So this is a problem, and to fix it, we just need to copy this code and then add it above the session. And then here, instead of saying else if, we need to say if. And for the session, we need to say uh, uh, we need to close the curly bracket and then else if. That way, it will be fixed. And there are so many ways to fix this. You can even create a variable to decide whether the user came from. So you can decide whether the user came from their account or from the session or from the cart. But this is going to fix it, so you don't have to do that. But it depends upon uh, how you want to do it. So let me use this method and show you that it will work. So if user, if I go to the cart, let me go to the cart. And if I click on check out, and if I go to my, uh, if I fill out this form, and if I click on place order, uh, the order will be placed, and here it's going to display the amount. And if I go to my account and click on one of the orders, for example, the first order, click on details, and then click on payment, the amount is 405. So we, do, we don't have a collision between the uh, amount in the cart and the amount in the uh, in the user's account, uh, the, the products in the, in the user's account, which is great, which is very uh, important and great. Welcome back. Now what we need to do is that we need to take the user to another page after they complete a payment. So here, for example, if user wants to uh, buy these two items and clicks on the PayPal account, uh, PayPal button and logs in. And after the user, let me show you the complete process. So here it's going to display the total amount, which is 405, as you can see, 405. Now if user clicks on pay now, if user clicks on pay now, uh, and uh, the process will be will be successful, as you can see, transaction completed, and if I click on OK, nothing is going to happen. And this is a problem, because the user might think that something is wrong, and they might they may pay again. So we need to take the user to a new page and tell them that everything was fine. So how can we do that? To do that, we need to create a new page. So what I'm going to do is that here, I'm going to say window.location.href and then .href and then I'm going to say, I'm going to go to a new page that's going to uh, finalize everything. That's going to uh, change the order status and store payment information in the database. So here I'm going to say uh, window location uh, href and then I'm going to say uh, server forward slash complete underscore payment dot php and then I'm going to pass a couple of parameters I'm going to say here uh, I'm going to say uh, we need to pass the transaction ID. So I'm going to say here uh, transaction ID. I'm going to copy this. And then here I'm going to say transaction underscore ID is equal to and then plus and then I'm going to paste the transaction ID. And then I'm going to say plus and then I'm going to say and and order underscore ID is equal to order ID. We need to get the order ID. So I'm going to say here PHP. I'm going to say plus and then PHP and then echo echo order ID. Here order underscore ID. However, we need to get the order ID. Where should we get the order ID from? So to get the order ID, remember, there are two pages where we get to the payment uh, page uh, from. So we have the order details. In the order details, we can get to the payment page from the order ID details. Therefore, in the order details, we need to create a new input here and pass the order ID. So I'm going to say here input type hidden name order ID and value is equal to php order id echo echo order id but where is the order id here remember we have at the top we have here 
uh, order details. We have the uh, uh, order uh, uh, items, and we have the, here the post order ID. So we need to use this order ID. So I'm going to say instead of saying this, I'm going to say echo post post order ID. Or we already, by the way, he, here we already store the order ID. So we can, instead of saying post, I'm going to say order ID because we stored it in a local variable here. Order ID. However, there is another page where we can get to the uh, payment page from, which is the, uh, the uh, place. It's not a page, it's, the, it's this file, place order. So from the place order, Remember here we go we 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 can go and we should go to the payments from here. 